Hello and welcome to Man Plays Game. Pan Staz made a game called World of Horror, and I played it. Inspired by 80s era adventure games, World of Horror's look is incredibly fascinating. A lot of games nowadays try to emulate the old school look of gaming, but only achieve this superficially. Behind the sprites you find modern style gameplay and graphics engines, but this? This isn't a love letter to old school games, this is an old school game. It has at best a 2-bit display and the music is 8-bit. Besides the strange subject matter, I would completely believe this to be a re-release of an adventure game from the 80s. There are also little visual perks in this game like being able to randomize colors and if you want one or two bit display. You can also zoom out and see that you're playing on an 80s era CRT and desktop, which shows that a thoughtful recreation was the goal from the start. Now I mentioned subject matter. The developers claim this is a love letter to Junji Ito and HP Lovecraft. If you are watching a video game review, I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume you know about Lovecraft's work. Junji Ito might be more obscure, so just really quick. He's a Japanese horror manga artist that makes nightmares such as this. Oh, and this one's creepy. And ah, too much. <coughs> this game definitely takes themes from Lovecraft, and as you can see, the visuals are heavily inspired by Ito. Beyond being an eye-catching and almost perfect representation of early PC gaming, there is also a nicely crafted game when you peel back the skin. World of Horror is a roguelite mystery horror RPG with an emphasis on replayability. Using a library of different adventures, encounters, conditions, and characters, each playthrough is randomly generated, allowing for maximum variation. To add to the mix, most mysteries have multiple endings depending on the order you play them and what items you have, so replayability is not a problem. The game takes place in a quiet seaside town that is slowly descending into madness. Your character has been following the strange happenings and is finally ready to do something about it. Aided by items, spells, and allies, you chance your skills against the Elder God and other eldritch horrors that are seeping into your reality. You start your adventure at home, where you can rest or take baths to soothe your body and mind or gain XP. It is also where you select which mystery you want to solve. During mysteries, you travel to different areas to investigate leads. Each investigation is like a roll of the dice, leading to a random encounter that can benefit or hurt. Usually hurt. To survive these encounters, you perform skill checks against one of your six stats, Dexterity, Strength, Charisma, Knowledge, Perception, and Luck. Failing affects one of the unique stats, Stamina, Reason, and Doom. Stamina and Reason are your physical and mental health respectively, and Doom is the amount of influence the Elder God has on your town, causing areas to increase physical encounters and introduce skill check penalties. If Doom reaches 100%, or either of your healths reach zero, the game is over. So you must manage these resources to survive the game... What did I just say? Is this also a resource management sim? <sighs> cool. To protect these resources, you need to level up and equip stat boosting items. Leveling up grants you one stat point to add to the six main stats or heal. You also choose a perk, which usually boosts one stat or gives you a combat advantage. I'll talk about combat in a second. Items can be purchased and sometimes found during a mystery. Money is hard to come by and there are only four inventory slots, so you need to be selective over what you carry. There are also three equipment slots marked A, B, and C. Slots B and C are for equipment and items that modify your stats, and A is for your weapon, which brings us to... Combat. The learning curve on this game is steep. There is a light tutorial, but I found it was more a trial by fire, which actually helped the suspense of combat. Enemies don't just attack your physical health, they can reduce your mental health, increase your doom, or all three. In combat, there is an action bar that you can fill up with offensive and defensive moves. After the bar is full, you initiate the sequence and then it's the enemy's turn. Because of the battle difficulty, you really need to take your time thinking about what the right combination should be. Defending and dodging is just as important as landing a hit, and sometimes running away is the right answer. As you increase stats, the less time certain actions take, so you can build larger sequences. This really opens things up, because combat can be a real grind. Once you figure out the ideal sequence for an enemy, you just end up doing that over and over and over again, slowly whittling down their HP. Honestly, it can be frustrating as hell, but I digress. The combat all comes down to thinking about the long game, not just surviving the mystery, but getting all the way to the end. As you do more runs and discover more endings and secrets, you unlock in-game achievements. 
These can be new playable characters, new stories, and new Elder Gods that you use in the customized playthrough game mode. This game mode allows the most planning for those that don't enjoy surprises. You can choose your character, which is important because they all have unique stats and perks right from the start, like this guy. He's strong and dumb and he comes with cigarettes. Yeah. You also decide on the difficulty, which changes how much health you start with. Finally, you get to choose your Elder God, which places a limitation on your playthrough, and some really up the difficulty. The Spider God, for example, stops the player from fleeing combat, which can end a run real quick. All of the different modes I played here were enjoyable in their own right, and there is even a game mode that hasn't been released yet. So despite a bit of drag with early combat, World of Horror succeeded in almost everything they attempted. Being able to sell a game that has 30-year-old graphics is an achievement in its own right, but it was enjoyable too. I'm glad to give World of Horror a 4 out of 5, meaning if you've ever played a point-and-click adventure or text-based RPG, you really should get this game. And if you haven't, I still think it's a worthwhile experience. It's on early access right now, so pick it up while it's cheap. Thanks for watching, and take care.